gene-based therapy continues to be um, very important, and we're continuing to learn a lot from uh, these uh, trials. And uh, a really big news is uh, with Tominersen, which is an antisense oligonucleotide, um, an ASO, and um, some results have been released and shared um, in the recent weeks. And um, Tominersen, uh, as many people know, uh, the drug dosing was stopped in March of last year due to um, unfavorable risk to benefit ratio in the drug uh, versus the placebo group. And uh, Roche, the company um, uh, running this trial, uh, released some data. Um, there was, uh, while it did lower the mutant Huntington levels effectively, um, there was no clinical efficacy. And in fact, not only was there no clinical efficacy, but those on the participants on the drug, um, the more frequently dosed group, they did worse um, than those who were on the placebo. And um, uh, they also performed a post hoc analysis. And in doing that, they divided the participants into four subgroups based on age and the CAP score. And CAP score is, um, it takes into account age and the CAG repeat expansion. And it's an estimate of the length and severity of the individual's exposure to the effects of the expanded CAG repeat. So they performed a median split. And uh, so based on the age and the CAP score, so they had uh, four different groups with uh, low age and um, low CAP score and uh, different combinations of which one's high and which one's low. But the bottom line is um, when they did the post hoc analysis in the low age and the low CAP score group, uh, that being age of less than uh, 48 years old and CAP score of under 500, there was a trend towards um, the less frequently dosed group being numerically superior to the placebo group when they looked at this composite um, score that takes into account uh, clinical performance or clinical exam scores, um, cognitive scores, and functional scores. So again, this, is, uh, this was statistically not significant and it's a post hoc analysis, but based on that analysis, there are some considerations for a potential phase two study again, using, still using the Tom and Nursen. And um, if, so that hasn't been, um, it's not a certain um, uh, thing that, that it's going to go into phase two, but if that were to um, be designed, then there would be considerations, considerations for younger patients, those with lower CAP score and um, probably uh, lower dosing or maybe less frequent dosing. But, but the goal would be to have um, sort of lower goal of mutant Huntington uh, lowering and um, sort of less, less exposure to the drug. Um, so that was the big news for Tom and Erson. And um, the other ASO drug, which is allele uh, specific, and that means it's the drug is targeted at a specific SNP, and that's a, a drug called WAVE003, and that's also in development and will go into a trial and the main difference for that drug is um, uh, uh, compared to its predecessors, which uh, were targeted at two other SNPs, it has a different backbone chemistry. So that different backbone chemistry is expected to lead to uh, better distribution, um, greater potency, um, greater half-life, and there's some positive animal data. So um, that's uh, something to look forward to as well.